Hello, friends. Strictly Ken Strickland. Um, I wanted to share with you my personal virus odyssey. Well, started out with a funeral immediately after the call to quarantine um, started to come out, uh, which I took very seriously. But needing a lot of outdoor time, I discovered walking through cemeteries. And that's when I, or actually bike riding through a cemetery. And that's when I discovered the grave of John Greenleaf Whittier, an American poet who lived in Haverhill, Mass, and spent his life right in about the area of the country that I'm in now. He went to church here in Amesbury, a Quaker church, but he was a poet. Along with being a political figure, his views were liberal, that he was a founder of the Republican Party. But without any further ado, um, I just discovered him a couple of months ago and started reading his work. This is one of his more famous works. It's called Snowbound, A Winter Idol by John Greenleaf Whittier. So it begins with this inscription and then goes into the work, which of the day was long form poetry, which is amazing. So let me see what I can do with this. So this is Snowbound, a Winter Idol by John Greenleaf Whittier. To the memory of the household it describes, this poem is dedicated by the author, as the spirits of darkness be stronger in the dark, so good spirits, which be angels of light, are augmented not only by the divine light of the sun, but also by our common wood fire. And as the celestial fire drives away dark spirits, so also this our fire of wood doth the same. Announced by all the trumpets of the sky arrives the snow and the driving o'er fields, Seems nowhere to alight the whited air, Hides hills and woods and rivers in the heaven, And veils the farmhouse at the garden's end. The sled and traveler stop, The courier's feet delayed, all friends shut out, The housemates sit around the radiant fireplace, Enclosed is a tumultuous privacy of storm, Emerson, the snowstorm. The sun that brief December day rose cheerless over hills of gray, and darkly circled gave a noon a sadder light than waning moon, slow tracing down the thickening sky its mute and ominous prophecy, portent seeming less than threat it sank from sight before it set. A child no coat, however stout, of homespun stuff could quite shut out. A hard bull bitterness of cold that checked mid vein the circling race of life blood in sharpened face. The coming of snowstorm told the wind blew east. We heard the roar of ocean on his wintry shore and felt the strong pulse throbbing there beat with low rhythm our inland air. Meanwhile, we did our nightly chores, brought in the wood from our out of doors, littered the stalls and from the mows, raked down the herd grass of cows, heard the horse whinnying for his corn, and sharply clashing horn on horn, impatient down the stanchion rows, the cattle shake their walnut bows. While peering from his early perch upon scaffold's pole of birch, the cock his crested helmet bent, and down his querulous challenge sent. Unworn by any sunset light, the gray day darkened into night, a night made hoary with a swarm, a world dance of blinding storm, a zigzag wavering to and fro, cross and recross the winged snow, and ere the early bedtime came, the white drift piled in the window frame, and though the glass, the cloth line posts, look in like tall and sheeted ghosts. So all night long the storm roared on, the morning broke without a sun, in tiny spheral traced with lines of nature's geometric signs, in starry flake and pellicle, all day the hoary meteor fell, and when the second morning shone, we looked upon a world unknown, on nothing we could call our own, around the glistening wonder bent, the blue walls of firmament, no cloud above, no earth below, a universe of sky and snow! The old familiar sights of ours took marvelous shapes, strange domes and towers, rose up where sty or corn cribs stood, or garden wall or belt of wood. A smooth white mound the brush piled showed, a fenceless drift was once a road. The bridle post an old man sat with loose-flung coat and high-cocked hat. The well curb had a Chinese roof and even a long sweep high aloof, in its slant splendor seemed to tell of Pisa's leaning miracle. 
a prompt decisive man no breath our father wasted boys a path we pleased for when did farmer boy count and summons less than joy to guard our necks and ears from snow we cut the solid whiteness through and where the drift was deepest made a tunnel walled and overlaid with dazzling crystal we have read of rare aladdin's wondrous cave to guard our necks and ears from snow we cut the solid whiteness through and where the drift was deepest made a tunnel walled and overlaid with dazzling crystals we have read of rare aladdin's wondrous cave and to our own his name we gave the old horse thrust his long head out and grave with wonder glazed about the cock his lusty greeting said and forth his speckled harem led the oxen lashed their tails and hooked and mild reproach of hunger look all day the gusty north wind bore the loosening drift in his breath before low circling around its southern zone the south the sun through dazzling snow mist alone no church bell lent its christian tone to the savage air no social smoke curled over woods of snow hung oak a solitude made more intense by dreary voiced elements the shrieking of the mindless wind the moaning trees bows swaying blind and on the glass the unmeaning beat by dreary voiced elements the shrieking of the mindless wind the moaning trees bows swaying blind in the glass the unmeaning beat of ghostly fingertips of sleet beyond the circle of our hearth no welcome sound of toil or mirth unbound the spell and testified of human life and thought outside we minded that the sharpest ear the buried brooklet could not hear the music of whose liquid lip had been to us a championship and in our lonely life had grown to have an almost human tone as night drew on the form the crest of wooded knolls the rigid west the sun of snow-blown traveler sank from sight beneath the smothering bank we piled with care our nightly stack of wood against the chimney back the oaken log green huge and thick and on its tout the stout back stick the knotty forestick laid apart then filed between with curious art the ragged brush then hovering near we watched the fire red blaze appear heard the crackle crackle caught the gleam of white wash well and sagging beam until old rude furnished room burst flower like into rosy bloom while radiant with mimic flame outside sparkling drift became and through the bare broad lilac tree our own warm hearth seemed blazing free the crane and pendant trammels showed the turks heads and the adirons glowed while childish fancy prompt to tell the meaning of the miracle whispering the old time under the tree when fire outdoors burns merrily, there the witches are making tea.